Hi folks and welcome back to Travels with Paddles. My name's James and today we're doing an absolutely classic sea paddle. We're on Hailing Island on the south coast of England and we're planning to go all the way around. Here's a map of the route. We've been around Hailing before but this is the first time that we've started at Sandy Point in the southeastern corner. Total distance is just over 13 miles. There's something decidedly satisfying about paddling right the way around an island. I guess it's the sense of achievement of starting and finishing in the same place and knowing that you've been all the way around it. Hailing Island is definitely one of our all-time favourite sea paddles. It offers a nice variety of paddling conditions, from the open sea on the south coast, the two harbours on the east and western sides and then the narrow channel on the northern side. At just over 13 miles it's also a very accessible paddle that can be completed with relative ease in the course of a day. However, for your trip to be a success you do need to take a bit of time beforehand and do some planning. In particular the tide can be your best friend if you get the planning right, but it can be your worst enemy if you get it wrong. Bear in mind that the channel at the north of the island dries out pretty much completely at low tide and turns into a sticky, gooey mess of mud. When I'm planning a hailing trip, I generally start in either the southwestern corner or the southeastern corner, about two hours before high water at Portsmouth. Here, we've set off from Sandy Point on the southeastern corner. We're going north up Chichester Harbour with the rising tide, aiming to reach the hailing bridge just as the tide starts to turn. We'll have lunch just after the bridge at the top of Langston Harbour and then set off to head down Langston Harbour with the falling tide, again getting tidal assistance. By the time we reach Ferry Point in the southwestern corner, the flow through the narrow harbour entrance will be quite strong so we'll need to watch out for that. You also need to get out through the harbour entrance and over the East Winner sandbar Within a couple of hours of high tide, otherwise the east winner will be exposed and you'll either have a long paddle all the way around it or you'll have to portage over the top. We'll then turn to follow the southern beach all the way back to the start at Sandy Point. So, with the trip plan complete, that brings us back to the video. Right now we're about halfway up the eastern side of Hailing, somewhere around Mill Rythe and heading northwards towards the bridge. Apologies for the steadily reducing quality of the image. There was a bit of a north-easterly wind which was catching the spray off Hannah's paddles and splattering it all over the camera, which was then drying to form a sort of crusty salt cake over the camera lens. Unfortunately, I only noticed at lunchtime, so it kind of gets worse until then. Here we are in the northern channel heading towards Hailing Bridge. I must admit I do like doing this anti-clockwise circumnavigation as it's just about high water now and yet there's still some flow going with us around the top of the island. Watch out for the old Hailing Billy Railway bridge pillars, as at high tide they're just beneath the surface and you could easily get stuck on them. Here you can still see one of the old signals from the railway, and Tony who was following us round the island on his bike. Time for lunch I think. And the A-team today was Hannah, Jane and Tony. Sarah, Martin and Alex. And me of course. After lunch we start our trip down the western side of the island through Langston Harbour. I guess this little boat must have broken free of its moorings. At this point, if you're looking for a feature to aim for in the distance, there are two chimneys or towers that you can't really see on the video but you can see them much clearer when you're there. Uh, aim for these and they'll take you pretty much to the entrance of Langston Harbour. 
You can always follow the channel marker boys if necessary, but just be careful for other boats. We had some really dramatic skies on this section of the paddle, there were rain squalls all around. Now you can see those two chimneys or towers fairly clearly. This is the remnants of an old Marlbury Harbour caisson that was originally designed for the D-Day landings in World War II, but this one was never taken across the channel. We've got some good flow through the harbour entrance and we are really storming along now. Just as we were rounding Ferry Point, the wind whipped up and we had a rain squall. Plus, there were two cool dudes doing some e-foil, or is it electric hydrofoil boarding? Not sure. Either way, very cool. For just a few minutes, the rain was really thumping it down. Here we're heading past the Inn on the Beach and then Funland on the South Beach of Hailing. Quite surprised this guy was out in this weather. Once you pass these two white buildings, you've only got a few hundred yards left until you get back to the start. The brown triangular building with a round window is a great marker, as the beach is only two groins further down. And that's it, we're back where we started. I hope you enjoyed the paddle, and as always, until next time, stay safe on the water.